In part one, we talked about the activation of our DNA, and this is a concept that is not entirely understood yet. This is something that is happening right now. It's not something that will happen all of a sudden and that you have to wait for. This is something that you and I get to activate by becoming more in tune and aware of ourselves. If we're just sitting around saying, goodness, I'm stoked for my DNA to activate, but in the meantime, I'm going to keep eating at McDonald's and keep watching TV for four hours a day and keep on being a jerk to people I don't like, then don't expect yourself to experience any profound shifts. The higher strands of your DNA will bring you more in tune with yourself, for they are you, and you have to be the one to choose the path of awareness and unity. So higher strands of DNA, what does this really mean? The portions of the DNA chain that science has presently identified as the double helix represents only the surface portions of the chemical, elemental, and electrical components of the active DNA strands. Science has yet to understand the multidimensional spectra of DNA manifestation, though we are beginning to remember. The human DNA imprint will always appear from external analysis as a two-strand double helix configuration in three dimensions. What is not understood is that within the double helix there are, and will be progressively more, additional double helix strands which fuse together. As our understanding evolves into the multidimensional spectra, the understanding of the structure and function of DNA will progressively advance. A team of Russian researchers working with DNA started a project to progressively learn more about DNA by combining forces with linguists and have dived into the unknown of the 90% of junk DNA which we currently embody. Their findings are evolutionary! According to them, our DNA is not only responsible for the construction of our body, but is also used as data storage and in communication. They learned that the 90% of DNA follows the same rules as all of our human language. The way that sentences, paragraphs, and chapters work in a book is the same way that our DNA works. This is the first double helix strand, the one that Western science looks at, which is basically like a sentence of DNA. However, if you step back and see the bigger picture, you begin to see the paragraph, stepping back further and you see the chapter, and so on. These larger and larger strands span through the different frequencies of reality, the different dimensions, which makes them harder to find in our modern science. Western science, instead of looking at DNA like this, we're cutting out pieces of DNA from here and adding them over here, which is similar to picking out words in certain sentences and putting them with other words in other sentences to see if they fit together and can make a new energy, a new idea. This is the nature of our junk DNA, of which Western science just didn't understand for the longest of times. The DNA isn't junk, it's just misunderstood, and also not as used right now because of our dense level of consciousness. However, we are beginning to activate and reawaken our DNA through our ever-expanding consciousness and our desire to know more. The very awareness of this DNA is what is activating it, awareness of our higher selves and our connection to the all and the interconnectedness to each other. We are directly connected to the earth as well and exist as a part of it, kind of like a child in its mother's womb. If anything happens to the mother, it creates an energetic imprint that affects the child. The earth is our mother, hence the name Mother Earth. Our morphogenic field exists as a part of her larger morphogenic field of the Earth. If something happens to the Earth's energetic grid, then we inherit these problems into our own grid. Our energetic anatomy is exactly like the Earth's, with chakras, meridians, axiotonal lines, and DNA. If something happens to the planet's grid, then that affects every person's DNA on the planet. We are at a very important point in history right now, because we are remembering how to regenerate our original organic imprint for health. We don't even need science and fancy equipment to do this. We're just required to learn how to use what we came here with. By moving into a space of love and light, opening and living from the heart, and living in a place of emotional stability and health, you can once again reactivate your light body, and in doing so, reconnect with the higher frequencies of your being. Energetic blockages will reveal themselves as problems in your own life. Depression, anxiety, temper rages, or personal problems in your life, which are causing stuckness or driving you down a path of chaos or disruption, are also energetic blockages. We talk a bit more about this in Lesson 13. A lot of teachings online demonstrate that there are specific shapes and geometries that you have to work with, such as the star tetrahedral Merkaba field, to reactivate your light body. This is true, but you also have to remember that the geometry is inherent to your being. It's actually not necessary to put pressure on yourself to put a star tetrahedral Merkaba field around your body and keep each piece spinning opposite to each other at this particular speed, at this particular ratio, and it is important to get the feel of it and understand where it is and what shape it is. Beyond that though, it's more importantly that you put your focus into love, your heart center, and creating a vibrant reality for yourself. Realize that you are a creator and that the experiences that you are having are of your creations. 
Bring love into your life and all of those around you. The light body will reactivate when you are ready, and you will know when you are ready. My advice is also to work with sacred geometry. If it resonates with you, put conscious thought into understanding things like the yin-yang, the understanding of duality. You can also work with the trinity, which is understanding mind, body, and spirit, or wisdom, understanding, and beauty. Then there's the four elements of creation. Earth is physical, air is mental, water are emotional, and fire is spiritual. If you're familiar with the tarot, you can use it to go so much deeper into understanding the four elements, which is the basis of the four suits in the playing deck of cards. And the major arcana are the experiences that you go through, the toroidal field geometry, from the path to the fool to understanding the all, from the singularity all the way around to the singularity. Beyond that, you can also try working with energies, meditate with crystals, go get Reiki or practice Qigong. The more you work with them, the more receptive you become to feeling the energy fields all around you. The final thing I want to say is this. We are all one, and our DNA is connected. The process of DNA activation is as much a solo journey as it is a collective one. Through conscious conversation, getting in tune with your friends, and opening up your heart to those around you who you can trust, will facilitate DNA activation within not just you, but those who you communicate with. Think of it like a big jigsaw puzzle, and everyone has a different piece of this puzzle. By simply communicating with them, hugging them, gazing into their eyes, listening to what they have to say, and sharing what you know with them, you will facilitate a transfer of energy. And that's just it. DNA activation is feeling. Truly feeling more than you ever have before. There was a TED Talks by a man named Paul Zak, who spoke about trust, morality, and oxytocin, the hormone that facilitated these feelings within. In my understanding, Hormones like oxytocin are the third dimensional manifestation of these feelings and vibrations from the higher frequency coming down into the physical body. Just as the heart organ is the physical manifestation of the source and center of your being and a different frequency as well. I will link you to this video. And ultimately what he concluded was that physical contact, hugging, holding hands, eye gazing are some of the most important factors in awakening to your whole self. Opening up true feelings of trust and awareness of yourself and others is what's going to take us to the next level of human connection. For when we can look into another's eyes and see ourselves, that's when we know we're on the right track. Want to change the world? Paul's conclusion was five hugs a day. And make them count. Thank you.